Donald Trump has a new legal gambit. He's back in court on Friday, but sources tell CNN that he posed a penalty of more than $350 million. Beneath New York's famous city, there's a serious problem hidden behind the fancy exterior. Shockingly, the city, once seen as unbeatable, is now in big trouble. The things that people used to invest in and trust are falling apart, and big real estate and finance companies are leaving, showing that people no longer believe in New York. The bustling streets are now empty as people run away from the chaos, leaving the city on the edge of despair. So what caused all this mess? Let's dig deeper to find out the scary truths and bad results facing a city that's almost falling apart. Shattered dreams in Gotham. Imagine, if you will, a world where companies casually glance over the shoulder of morality, deciding that engaging with the slightly tarnished might not be so bad after all especially when the scales of justice seem to be more decorative than functional. The scenario is laughably predictable. Why? Because the absence of repercussions has become the norm rather than the exception. The concept of accountability is as thin on the ground as common sense in a social media argument. And then there's the laughable attempt to tiptoe around the giant glaring elephant in the room, the so-called fraud. Oh, New York, once a beacon of ambition, has now morphed into the punchline of a particularly bad joke, the kind that leaves you cringing rather than chuckling. To pour your money into the quagmire that is New York's current investment scene, you'd find more wisdom in betting on a three-legged horse in the final stretch of the Kentucky Derby. But wait, there's more. Let's dive into the latest saga, the melodrama that is the Truckers for Trump movement, a real tearjerker for the social media age. The word on the virtual street is that a mere 10% of our heroic truckers heading towards the city that never sleeps might actually start to catch some Zs, boycotting the very idea of delivery. Picture it, a world where the cost of doing business skyrockets faster than a New Year's Eve countdown in Times Square. It's almost set in stone, or at least in a flurry of angry tweets, that from Monday, deliveries to New York City will become as rare as an honest politician. It's honestly a sad joke for what I consider the whole country. A New York judge, as bent as a $9 note, made a decision that many saw coming, but not to the scale we imagined. This year was supposed to be the big chance for investing in places like Chicago, California, and New York City. I've been holding my breath for 40 years to jump into that market. I was so sure, Steve, this was our time. But then that decision came down like a ton of bricks. It was a clear sign to put down the pencils, step away, and forget about venturing into that mess. Following a massive $355 million ruling in the fraud case against former President Donald Trump, top investors are broadcasting a clear message. They're pulling out of New York. This has sent a wave of caution, painting a picture of distrust and skepticism, shaking the very foundations we thought were solid. Real estate tycoon Grant Cardone made it crystal clear. His powerhouse firm, Cardone Capital, has turned its back on New York's real estate market. Now, if we sidestep the whole Trump debacle and peer into the heart of the matter, we're faced with a bewildering reality. And trust me, I'm no outlier in this sea of disbelief. The decision defies all logic. It's like trying to decipher a foreign script without a key. It's not just perplexing, it's utterly baffling. And this isn't some isolated rant, I'm narrating a slice of the grim reality unfolding right before our eyes, a sentiment echoed by many in our shoes. Forget what the governor preaches. New York had already clinched the title of a failing state, neck and neck with California, thanks to their bewildering policies, astronomical taxes, and suffocating regulations. The verdict was in long before this fiasco. New York was the epitome of what not to invest in. And believe me, I'm far from the only voice in this chorus of disapproval. Let's dive into a tangible scenario currently shaping the real estate landscape. The burgeoning market of ultra-luxurious data centers. Picture this. Facilities costing a staggering $2.5 to $3.2 billion a piece. Not your average investment. These behemoths are not only capital intensive, but also demand low energy costs and a gauntlet of permits. Yet, they're the golden geese for major institutions worldwide, driving developers like myself to venture into this lucrative field. And power, you ask? 
New York has Niagara Falls, an energy mecca that should have been the holy grail for such projects, promising to spawn 400 direct jobs and a ripple effect of additional employment in ancillary services. But here's the clincher. New York is off the table. Its uninviting business environment repels rather than attracts. So where do we turn? Oklahoma, North Dakota, West Virginia, states where the welcome mat is out, where Governor Kevin Stitt and others have rolled up their sleeves to meet with my team. The contrast couldn't be starker, and the message couldn't be clearer. New York, with all its potential, has become anathema to investors like us, a no-man's land in the realm of high-stakes investment. The fallout is not just a missed opportunity for New York, but a testament to how swiftly and decisively markets can shift when states play a losing hand in the high-stakes game of economic policy and investor relations. Now, see how everyone's starting to leave and talk making things even harder for a city already in trouble. Fleeing the sinking ship. Governor Burgum, Governor Justice, they're steering their ships in directions that spell success. They're at the helm of what we're calling winter states. They don't engage in the kind of self-sabotage that's become the hallmark of other places. Here I am trying to gather massive amounts of money, we're talking about a hefty sum in the billions, to fund grand projects. But do you really think any savvy investor, be it an overseas entity, a hedge fund, or a retirement fund, would dare to dip their toes into the murky waters of New York's current economic climate? The answer is a resounding no, and that's the alarming signal New Yorkers need to wake up to. The residents, the very backbone of New York, need to start questioning, why has our state plummeted to such depths? What's scaring away not only the businesses that were here, but also the new capital, the fresh opportunities, like a colossal $4 billion data center. The thought of placing such an investment in New York? Forget it. There's not even a sliver of a chance. New York is in a quagmire, and clawing its way out is going to be a Herculean task. This isn't just about recovery. It's a seismic shift in identity, magnified by the pandemic's aftermath, where states are starkly divided into winners and losers. Look over at Tennessee, with Nashville booming as the fastest growing city in the US, a testament to what sound policies and competitive tax rates can achieve. It's time to draw the line. We need to distinguish between the victors and the vanquished in this economic arena. And currently, New York is languishing on the wrong side of that divide, labeled as a monumental loser state. In the middle of this backdrop, there's a stir among President Trump's base, a growing discontent with what they perceive as a skewed justice system sparking talks of a boycott that could send shockwaves through America's largest metropolis. The truck driver's response in New York City, their reaction to the recent judicial decisions, is this an isolated incident? Or are we witnessing the first domino to fall in what could become a catastrophic collapse? The situation begs a deeper analysis. Is this merely a temporary blip on the radar or a harbinger of a more profound and pervasive downturn? The answers to these questions could shape the future, not just for New York, but for the entire landscape of American business and investment. Oh, please, let's not kid ourselves here. This is far from being a one-time event. It's a seismic shift, a new chapter in the annals of legal history, courtesy of Letitia James and her team, along with a certain judge. We've opened Pandora's box, folks. New York's real estate moguls are now sweating bullets, pondering over their past dealings with a fine-tooth comb. Why? because suddenly it seems the rules of the game have changed overnight. And what a game it's been, where apparently the end justifies the means, so long as the banks, those oh-so-sophisticated entities, give their nod of approval after a so-called thorough vetting of property values. And let's not forget the cherry on top, repaying loans in full with interest. No harm, no foul, right? Wrong, according to this new legal gospel. So here we are witnessing the collective anxiety of the real estate elite who are now pondering the chilling possibility. What if, by some wild twist of fate, a Republican attorney general, a rarity in these parts, takes office? Or perhaps a Republican DA in their development sandbox decides to follow suit using this case as a blueprint? The mere thought has them quaking, contemplating a future where they might be the next on the chopping block due to this unsettling precedent. Then there's Kevin, tossed into the mix, pondering, Governor Hochul's remarks. 
She paints this scenario as a one-off, a solitary case of Trump's alleged overreach, an anomaly in the otherwise spotless landscape of real estate dealings. Move along, nothing to see here, she seems to say, if you're playing by the rules. But let's cut through the platitudes. The undercurrent of fear is palpable, as this isn't just about following rules. It's about the unpredictable waves this case could send crashing through their operations. And let's circle back to the crux of the matter, shall we? The so-called victimless crime. Investors are up in arms, their anxiety peaking. Where, pray tell, is the aggrieved party counting their losses? We're talking about a judicial verdict that seems plucked from thin air, branding a hefty $355 million penalty, plus a delightful sprinkling of 9% interest, as justice served. But where's the justice when the victim chair remains glaringly empty? This whole ordeal reeks of arbitrariness, a show trial without a show, leaving everyone questioning, what does this mean for the sanctity of New York's legal standards? Are we now in an era where judges pull numbers from hats, setting precedents that leave more questions than answers? Ah, the plot thickens, and the legal community, one would hope, is taking a long, hard look in the mirror. Next, we're getting into the deep problems hitting a city that's trying to figure out where it went wrong. New York's Twisted Web There's no sugarcoating or eloquent speech that could possibly salvage the reputation tarnished by this decision. And let's be clear, this fiasco transcends the figure of Trump. Erase him from the equation. This debacle remains a distinctly New York catastrophe. The global audience watches, aghast and bewildered, murmuring amongst themselves, what on earth is New York doing to itself? It's a spectacle, a drama unfolding that no one expected nor wanted. In the middle of this chaos, whispers of rebellion are brewing, a tangible backlash against the city itself. Imagine, if you will, truck drivers, the very lifeblood of the city's supply chain, contemplating a drastic measure, a boycott. Yes, you heard right. In light of the staggering $355 million judgment, these road warriors are considering turning their backs on the Big Apple. The implications? Catastrophic doesn't even begin to cover it. Picture the scene. Empty shelves in supermarkets. Deserted aisles in big box stores. A sudden scarcity where abundance once reigned. This isn't just a minor inconvenience. It's a potential crisis in the making. Consider the reality here in New York City where a staggering 90% of communities depend like a lifeline on trucking for their daily sustenance and needs. We stand here, on the Jersey side, looking out at the George Washington Bridge, a vital artery, usually teeming with a relentless stream of trucks pouring into the city's heart. Yet there's talk of silence, of an unprecedented halt. And then there's this individual, a voice among many yet standing out, urging truck drivers to make a stand to say no to New York City as a destination for their cargo. The message is spreading like wildfire among the community. From the airwaves to the asphalt, it's resonating, a call to action that's gaining momentum. Picture this, a convoy of defiance, trucks veering away, rejecting the city's calls for delivery. I'm heading away from the chaos, one declares, representing a growing sentiment among his peers. By next Monday, they vow a collective shift, a tangible protest against what they perceive as an unjust penalty. This scenario unfolding before our eyes could ripple outwards, affecting not just the metropolitan area, but potentially every corner of the nation. The repercussions of a trucking boycott extend far beyond the city's confines, threatening to disrupt supply chains and inflate prices, hitting the pockets of average citizens. It's a domino effect a chain reaction sparked by legal proceedings that have spiraled into a full-blown economic and public sentiment crisis. This isn't just New York's problem anymore. It's a warning shot, a harbinger of potential upheaval that could unsettle markets and communities across the country. So let's talk about this fellow, self-dubbed Chicago Ray, who's suddenly the man of the hour, or so he thinks. Last we checked his little rant on X, what we used to call Twitter, in case you're behind on your social media lingo, exploded overnight. We're talking 6 million views, 60,000 likes, numbers that make you wonder if boredom has become a pandemic too. And guess who's riding the wave? None other than former President Trump, who couldn't resist giving Ray's video his seal of approval 
on his own digital soapbox, Truth Social. But let's not get carried away just yet. While the digital applause is loud, the real world echo is, well, less impressive. The reality? This so-called movement is as organized as a cat herding competition. Sure, Chicago Ray has his choir of supporters, voices from every corner of the map, but are they forming lines or just tapping like? As for the actual impact, it's as clear as mud. We did a bit of digging, reached out to the Teamsters Union, the big kahuna of truck driver representation. Their response, crickets, radio silence. Same story with the National Supermarket Association, headquartered right in the chaos epicenter, New York City. You'd think they'd have a word or two, but nope, nothing but the sound of unanswered calls. And what's got Chicago Ray and his virtual bandwagon all riled up? Oh, just a little matter of Judge Arthur and Gorin slapping former President Trump with a cool $355 million bill for fraud. Ray's crying foul, claiming it's all a big scheme to mess with the election. The narrative's as old as time, or at least as old as the last few news cycles. Every penalty, every verdict, somehow gets twisted into a grand conspiracy. It's election interference, they say, as if legal accountability takes a back seat when the calendar hits an election year. So here we are in the midst of what's being painted as a grand standoff with Chicago Ray at the helm waving the flag of defiance. But let's peel back the layers, shall we? Beneath the viral video and the digital cheers, what do we have? A smattering of support, a nebulous cause, and a whole lot of noise. It's the modern age's version of a tempest in a teapot, except this time the tempest brewing online and the teapots branded with hashtags and retweets. So we've got this one driver apparently ready to join the grand parade against New York City, spearheaded by none other than our newfound grassroots leader, Chicago Ray. She's ringing the alarm bells, predicting doom and gloom for the Big Apple. Shut down New York City, she claims, as if the city's fate hangs by the threat of her truck's exhaust. She insists she's not aiming to hurt the good folks of New York, but oh, the irony. Her part in this so-called movement could, as she believes, send the city into a spiraling chaos over missing just 10% of its truck deliveries. Suddenly, a carton of milk becomes a luxury item. Eggs are worth their weight in gold, and the average Joe can't catch a break. But let's not all jump on the bandwagon just yet. It turns out not every truck driver is ready to swear allegiance to Chicago Ray's cause. There's a split in the ranks, a division on the highways. A fair number of them are hitting the brakes on this whole boycott idea. Why? Because surprise, surprise, they're not all ready to throw their lot in with a former president found liable for fraud. Shocking, I know. And let's not forget the elephant in the room. New York City, with its sprawling boroughs and never-ending demand, is not exactly the kind of market you can just skip over like a bad diner on the highway. So here we are in the middle of a would-be revolution on wheels, with opinions as varied as the goods these trucks carry. On one side, we have drivers ready to turn their steering wheels in protest, envisioning themselves as the unlikely Robin Hoods of modern-day commerce. On the other, pragmatists who see the city not just as a series of streets, but as an essential artery in their livelihood, too critical to block off over political squabbles or personal vendettas. Is the mass exodus from New York merely a temporary setback or a sign of deeper, more irreversible cracks? What does this mean for the future of America's most iconic metropolis? Share your thoughts and don't forget to like and subscribe for more deep dives into the cities and stories shaping our world.